Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest of boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification game, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, Venmo, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, I'm making up a follow-up video. I already really expressed my deep and truest thoughts regarding the situation. Basically, Oscar De La Hoya released a tweet earlier on his verified Twitter account, and he basically said that if he was in charge of um, Deontay Wilder's career still, he would be a bigger star and bigger than Anthony Joshua, and Joshua would be begging him for a fight. I totally disagree with that, and I cited the reasons. I even did a live stream and gave my reasons why. Now, Lou DiBella, promoter, who's put on Wilder's last couple of shows, he was responding, and I want to talk about his response and some more De La Hoya talk. So Lou DiBella, his verified account, he put a bunch of crying emojis, and he said, what a joke you are, Oscar De La Hoya. Nearly all of 33 fights in total obscurity. What exactly did you do? Hashtag hater, hashtag tripping. And just to cover it again, this is what De La Hoya tweeted. I promoted Deontay Wilder's first 33 fights and made him a champion. If I was his promoter, he would be a star and Anthony Joshua would be begging for the fight and not the other way around. Hashtag heavyweights, hashtag super fights. So like my, my thing is this, that doesn't make sense to me because people complain about Wilder's resume, right? And the other thing is Wilder is more known now and just was trending and went viral now in his fight with Bermain Stavern and his last couple of fights. He's made more money on PBC, you know what I mean, fighting Gerald Washington and stuff. He's made some some good good um, headway or whatever. And he's had a lot of high profile fights where guys fail drug tests and stuff like that. And, and that's kind of what built the legend. So I don't understand what, what Oscar's talking about. His first 33 fights, I was in charge of it and I made him a champion. You know what I'm saying? So I agree with Lou DiBella. Like, what did you do? Like, I understand it was under your banner and you were putting on the shows, but that doesn't mean you made him. First of all, you didn't put that dynamite in Deontay Wilder's right hand. That's obviously God-given, something he was born with, right? His coach, JD's, he's the one that kind of got Wilder to stop fighting quite so wild. You know what I mean? So De La Hoya is like taking too much credit. But beyond all of that, I look at it like this. Like I said before, I, I, I'm really asking the fans, and if you have an answer, put it in the comment section. Name a fighter who's African-American that Golden Boy currently has, right, that is anywhere near the star power of even a David Lemieux, definitely a Canelo, you know what I'm saying? I can't think of one known fighter that's signed to the Golden Boy imprint that is getting that type of exposure. So how are you going to make Wilder? So to me, what Wilder's doing I'm not saying um, Heyman hasn't done anything, but I think Wilder's um, charisma, how he gets down, the knockouts he's getting, he, he's he's actually really been self-promoting a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? He's been making statements with his hands and, and talking the talk and stuff like that. And Lou DeBellas and Heyman and that side has been putting on his shows. And to me, he's bigger now than he was in his first 33 fights. So I totally disagree with De La Hoya saying and beyond all of that, you don't have these fighters anymore. You know what I'm saying? So, it, okay, you're saying that Wilder would be the man in the driver's seat and Joshua would be begging him for a fight, not the other way around, but it just sounds salty to me because you don't have him anymore. So either way, it doesn't make sense. And furthermore, is if, if what De La Hoya was really saying that was true, what is Al Heyman doing to these guys where they stay more loyal to his movement. You know what I mean? From Abnamadas to Leo Santa Cruz to Amir Khan, Adrian Broner, Daniel Garcia, uh, Deontay Wilder, Errol Spence Jr. All these guys had a working relationship and were fighting under the Golden Boy imprint, courtesy of Al Heyman, and none of them stuck with them. The only person that did, that was never advised by Al Heyman, to my knowledge, is Canelo Alvarez, and he's loyal. He's had the same trainers, the Reynosos, they have a, um, 
a common language. You know what I mean? Canelo doesn't speak as much English. De La Hoya speaks Spanish. So, you know what I mean? He's stuck over there. But to my knowledge, he was never advised by Al Heyman. But everyone that was advised by Al Heyman stuck by Al Heyman. So that has to show you something. Even Leo Santa Cruz named his kid after Al Heyman. Lil Al, right? And, and the other thing is, like, you look at it. They said Errol Spence Jr. was offered a Koto fight, right? Which we're going to talk about Errol in just a second. Offered a Koto fight, he turned it down, right? I heard Jesse Vargas, this is, some of you guys don't know this, but I heard he's being advised by Al Heyman. He was with top rank, but I heard Al Heyman's his dude now. You know what I mean? So I'm waiting for a little bit more confirmation, but to my knowledge, Al Heyman acquired him. And he turned down a Koto fight, right? They said Danny Garcia turned down a Koto fight. Mikey Garcia turned down a Koto fight. Mikey Garcia turned down a Jorge Linares fight. So to me, it looks a little bit desperate here for Golden Boy to kind of be like, it's like they're fishing for more fighters or something. Because why are you constantly in somebody else's stable? Like, I don't see Al Heyman talking about, oh, if Terrence Crawford was over here, then he would have a better future. And that might actually be true. Terrence Crawford might have a better future because a lot of who his contemporaries would be are on the Al Heyman stable since he's moving up to welterweight. But I don't see Al Heyman or Lou DiBella kind of like point, putting the bait out there like that. So to me, it looks a little bit desperate. And and I always challenge you guys, don't, don't listen to me. If I'm full of shit, you think I'm biased or whatever, just listen to what's being said and look at the facts. And to me, the fact of the matter is if golden boy he's saying he could promote deontay wilder to the point where he makes him bigger than the uk star even though the uk is lit right now and their fans are massively loyal right if he's saying he can do all this then how come wilder errol spence and amir khan all these guys aren't going over there you know what i mean amir khan he fought canelo why isn't why isn't he going back over to golden boy trying to make his next fight you know what I mean? Why isn't Errol Spence taking the Koto fight? So to me, the only person that they've acquired recently what that was a big name is Koto. And he was with Rock Nation. He bounced around from everyone. He was with Top Rank for a while, Koto Promotions. He went to Rock Nation. Then he went, you know what I'm saying? He was just trying to max out his dollar. And he's only fighting one more time and, and he's hanging him up. Now, finally, Fight Hype, shout out to them. They put up this interview recently. And look at the comments, 14 likes, 15, 15 dislikes so far. And De La Hoya is shocked by Errol Spence Jr.'s next fight, which is Lamont Peterson. And he explains why he needs a promoter. And he says, good luck. Now I watched it, the, it's a quick interview, so check it out. I'll link to it in the video. And he's like, who is Errol Spence fighting next? And he's like, Lamont Peterson. And then the interviewer is saying that, yeah, he's slated to get $3.5 million. There's some kind of rumor. I, I have seen stories and, and heard that, that he's getting $3.5 million to fight Lamont Peterson. I haven't talked to Spence. I don't really care about his, his, his purse. I'm not in another man's pocket. So I can't confirm or deny. But I have heard that rumor that he's getting that much. I think ESPN might have even said it too, that he was getting 3.5 for his next fight. That was the rumor that's going around. So I don't really care about all that, but if he's getting that much more power to him. And then De La Hoya was like sounding shocked in the interview. He was like 3.5 million for who? Lamont Peterson? He's getting, he's getting 3.5 for Peterson. Good luck. God bless. Good luck. I mean, that's all he could say. If you're getting paid like that, if it, if it is in fact true, Errol Spence is sitting pretty. He getting 3.5 million to fight a new welterweight because other people don't really want to fight him right now. And that's a good first title defense. It's a name. It's a guy you sparred with in the past. And you just listen to, to De La Hoya and what he's saying, it just, it makes him sound salty from all of Mayweather's recent fights, Mayweather Pacquiao, Mayweather Berto, Mayweather McGregor. He's always taken the standpoint of any kind of jab I can, I can release at Al Heyman and it's just it's not to me it's not becoming for a man to do that like constantly be talking about another person stable and stuff like that like just like get over it like like I said Errol Spence they said he had the opportunity to fight against Koto and he turned it down so obviously he's turning it down for obvious reasons Mikey Garcia has no promoter right now and he's making good money he just fought Broner they're talking about he might fight Robert Easter and he turned down Jorge Linares so obviously if you look at the facts obviously these guys that are working with Showtime PBC and or kind of in cahoots whether they're signed 
to a promoter or not, but being advised by Al Heyman or not, the people in that circle seem to be pretty content because if they weren't, then why wouldn't they do like Kodo and, and move over and switch over? So I don't know, man. You guys let me know what you think. That's my that's my honest thoughts. I just think De La Hoya should just worry about grooming really his stable and stuff like this. All this extra stuff is just makes him look like he's he's salty at Al Heyman's uh, stable. And it just it is what it is. But like I said, if if they felt the grass was greener on the other side, why wouldn't all these Mikey Garcia's? Why is his next fight going to be on Showtime? You know, what I mean, on an Al Heyman card with Al Heyman's promoters, DeBella or Richard Schaefer, or whoever holds it. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to be a, pretty much a premier boxing champs type of deal. That has to tell you something. Why is Errol Spence fighting under the PBC, Showtime, CBS or whatever premier boxing champs banner? Why aren't they just um, flying off the shelf to sign the Golden Boy? If you have an answer, drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.